Welcome back to another exciting episode of Feltboard Theater. We're going to continue on with the life of Saul in just a moment here. But before we do that, let's review our prayer memory verse, excuse me, for the week in Proverbs 3, 6. Proverbs 3, 6. It says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now remember, <clears throat> this verse is trying to teach us that in everything that we do, we should be putting God first. And if we do, his promise to us is that he'll give us the right kind of guidance. He'll lead us in the right direction. So let's pick up again in our Bibles in 1 Samuel. Uh, we're going to continue on learning about King Saul and Samuel before we get to King David. And we're in chapter 12 through 15 today, so you can follow along in your Bibles if you like. Now, if you remember from Wednesday night, Saul had done something very, very wrong. He had decided that he wasn't going to wait for Samuel to show up, and he was going to go ahead and sacrifice and do these uh, priestly duties uh, without waiting for Samuel, which was wrong. He should not have done that, and God punishes him. So Samuel comes along and sees King Saul one day. Now we have to remember that Samuel was a messenger for God. He spoke for God. So he comes and sees Saul, and he says, Listen, Saul, I've got a message from the Lord, and you need to listen to this. You are to go and entirely destroy the Amalekites. Now, he said, the people, the animals, every living thing, nothing shall be left. Now, real quick, the Amalekites were a very wicked group of people. They tried to get rid of God's people many years before, and God took care of his people and promised that someday he would destroy the Amalekites. We see that in Exodus chapter 17. Now, that time had come, and Samuel went home, leaving Saul to carry out the commandment of the Lord. Soon afterwards, Saul and his army met the Amalekites on the battlefield, and the Amalekites, they were destroyed. They were completely destroyed, and Saul actually obeyed God's word. But the thing of it is, all was not well. It was not a great thing. The night after the battle with the Amalekites, Samuel, he didn't sleep a wink. So this is his bed right here, and that's Samuel. And the word of the Lord came to him. And it said, he said, I am grieved that I ever made Saul king. He has not followed me. He has not carried out my orders. How had Saul disobeyed this time? What did he do now? Samuel knew he would find out soon, and he wept because King Saul had once again disobeyed God. All night long, he cried to the Lord. And even though he knew that Saul was wrong, Samuel still loved him. God's love for you and me is just like that, boys and girls. God knows we have sinned. He knows about the wrong things that we do. And the Bible tells us that we are all sinners. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says that God showed his great love toward us by sending the Lord Jesus Christ, his son, to shed his blood, to die for us while we were still sinners. That's, we see that in Romans 5.8. How wonderful is God's love towards us. The Bible tells us that early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to find Saul. He found that Saul had built a monument to himself. Look at that thing. Look how big that is. It's off in the distance there. This may have been something like a, a big pillar or maybe a statue. You know, this is just a, a little illustration here, but it was an honor in honor of his victory over the Amalekites. Samuel was saddened more than ever by the sight of that monument. It told him of the pride in the king's heart. So here he comes. <laughs> hey, uh, anybody uh, see my monument? Yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Uh... I'm sorry, that was a silly voice, but pride is silly, isn't it? So Saul came out to meet Samuel. The Lord bless you. Saul said, I have completely obeyed the Lord in all that he told me to do. Samuel's sad eyes seemed to look right into Saul's proud heart. If you have completely obeyed the Lord about the Amalekites, then why do I hear the bleeding of sheep and the lowing of cattle? So that's just, he, in other words, he hears the animals in the background. Now remember, God told him to destroy everything. Saul, God told you 
to destroy everything. That includes the cows and the sheep. Saul didn't even seem bothered by the question, though. He looked Samuel straight in the eyes. Why, these are the best of the sheep and cattle from the Amalekites. The people, my army, spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to bring an offering to the Lord your God. We have destroyed all the rest. Listen to what the Lord has told me, Samuel says. Go ahead, I'm listening, Saul answered. The Lord chose you to be king over Israel when you didn't think you were so important. Samuel must have been thinking about that moment that Saul had built to honor monument, excuse me, that Saul had built to honor himself. He continued, The Lord sent you out under his orders. He said, Completely destroy the Amalekites, those evildoers. Now why didn't you obey him? Why didn't you do it? <clears throat> well, Saul was proud, and he refused to admit his sin of disobedience. Not only was he disobedient, boys and girls, but he was also dishonest. He lied when he said that he destroyed everything, even though he clearly had not done all that God had told him to do. It's a very, very, very serious thing not to agree that we are wrong when the Lord points it out to us. The Lord can neither save nor bless us if we don't admit that we've done something wrong, if we don't admit that we've sinned. Saul replies to Samuel, he says, I did listen to the Lord's voice. The only person whose life I spared was Agag, the king. It was the people who took of the best sheep and cattle. It's their fault. I told you that they brought them for the sacrifices, he said. Saul did what a lot of us often do when we get in trouble. He, um, he blamed somebody else for his faults. It was their fault. They're the ones who did it. It wasn't me. I was trying to be obedient. They made me disobey God. So Samuel responds, and his eyes must have been full of tears when he saw everything that King Saul had done, how he had disobeyed God, how he had even brought back the king alive. And it was the custom of the winning army to show off the captured king as a war trophy. So more pride, hello, but these were God's people. God gave them all of their victories. It wasn't Saul. There was no room for pride here. There was no place for showing off. Saul, Samuel says, do you think the Lord delights as much in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience? Look, obedience is better than any sacrifice you can offer to the Lord. To listen to God is better than the very best sheep you could ever offer him. And instead of acknowledging God and following his direction, Saul decided to go his own way. But God wasn't satisfied with that. Samuel turned to Saul and said, Because you have rejected or refused the Lord's word, he has rejected you from being king. Wow. When Saul heard again that he was to be rejected as king, he was very, very sad. But he was not sorry about his sin. Listen, if we want God to forgive us, we have to actually be sorry about the sin that we've committed, and we have to turn away from it. That's called repentance. So Saul says, well, I have sinned. I did wrong in disobeying the Lord's command and your order. It was wrong to listen to the voice of my people. Now pardon my sin and go back with me, and I will worship. I will worship the Lord. Samuel knew that Saul did not mean what he said. He knew that Saul was more interested in what the people thought of him than what God thought about him. Oh man, that sounded good, didn't it? I hope they bought it. You think they believed him? You think they believe me, boys and girls? I hope they do. Uh, maybe, maybe I can trick God and fool him too. Samuel looks at him, and again, he must have been heartbroken. He said, I will not go with you. I have told you that the Lord has rejected you from being king. Yeah, I, I've sinned, Paul or Saul said again. Please, please do honor me before my people, and I will worship the Lord your God. Sadly, Samuel went with Saul. He saw Saul pretend to worship the Lord. That very day, Samuel, Saul's best friend, left and never visited him again. But he still grieved and prayed for proud King Saul. Boys and girls, very quickly, God expects us to obey him and to do exactly what he asks us to do. That's what he wants us to be. And and, and that's what we should be doing. Just like when your mom or your dad or your your grandparents or some other family member tells you to do something and they give you specific instructions on what to do, they expect you to do it the way they asked. 
If your mom tells you to, you know, go ahead and pick up your dirty clothes off the floor and put them in the hamper, if you just pick them up off the floor and throw them into a closet or throw them into the corner of your room or hide them under the bed, that's not doing what your parents asked you to do. That's not doing what mom said. That's doing what you want to do. And our verse, our memory verse for today is to put God first. Remember that? We want to put God first. And one of the best ways that we can do that is being obedient to Him, to do what He's asked us to do. And boys and girls, I want you to understand that God loves us and He cares about us, and He wants the best for us. And so it should be easy for us to obey Him. Just like we know that mom and dad want the best for us, it should be easy for us to obey them. But we don't always. Why? Because of our sin in our hearts. We have sinful hearts. And that's why we need to be strong. We need to resist the temptation to do wickedness, to do evil, to disobey and do the right thing. When that temptation to not do what we've been asked to do by God or our parents or teachers or pastors or teachers somewhere, you know, in Bible, or excuse me, in Sunday school, instead of resisting what they ask us to do, we should do what they've asked us to do, knowing that it pleases God. I hope this was a blessing to you, boys and girls. I miss you. I'll see you soon. Join us again Wednesday night for another exciting edition of Feltboard Theater.